Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, is the revelator once again. And hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet once again in yet another presentation inside the word of God and praying that you are being given the unique understanding the relevance of the teachings that are being presented and you are being given the hope, the courage, the motivation and praying also that above all you are receiving your spiritual salvation through every word ministration being uttered by the Holy Ghost. Today, I want to expose what the Holy Spirit lectured unto me as church extortion or spiritual extortion. The bribes that happen inside the house of the Lord, the corruption that evolves around the finances that happens inside the house of God and praying that throughout this presentation the Holy Spirit is going to utter his mind. The Holy Spirit is going to utter his word of wisdom for the benefit sake of your soul. Now, let us get into scriptures to understand more on spiritual extortion the extortion of bribes in the house of the Lord how one can be extorting money using threats against the congregation of Jesus Christ using a gospel that is being channeled not for spiritual development sake but a gospel that is designed to extort funds to extort money with the illegal threats that are misleading information through scripture reference meaning that a preacher can actually stand on the pulpit 
and create a sermon so as to extort money from the church using an offensive gospel not of truth but empty threads that have been packaged through the abuse of scripture reference for selfish means of benefit now for us to go further want to get into the book of x chapter 5 verse 1 but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession but kept part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. I want you to understand that whatever project was being done there by ananias and Sapphira was being done in the presence of the lord that is the danger that happens when you have a project that you are doing in the house of the lord and you're doing it in the name of jesus be it a project of building be it a housing scheme, be it a project of feeding the poor, whatsoever project that has been started in the house of the Lord, which has been started by God himself, and done in the name of the Lord, is followed up by the Lord, especially when it is a project that will elevate the name of the lord after it has been done meaning that the lord becomes the doer of it and he influences the activities of those projects and ananias and Sapphira had been given a task by the holy spirit in a project uh, that evolved around buying land for the church buying and selling land whatever project that was happening there it was a project uh, that was being done under ministerial foundations it could have been a project that was also catering for the poor that were homeless it could have been a project that was also assisting those that were less privileged those that were poor in that community and they were given the responsibility of keeping finances but ananias and Sapphira decided to keep back part of the price meaning that they decided to keep back part of the money and his wife also being privy to it brought a certain part when the scripture says he brought a certain part, it means he, he did not submit all the money. He brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why is Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price of the land? When all the money was meant to be submitted to the church Ananias and his wife Sapphira then decided to keep part of that money 
it's not every money uh, that comes into the church that should go into the preacher's pocket it's not every money that comes into the church that is all about the development of the life of the preacher there are certain funds that go through the church which are supposed to bless the poor there are certain funds that go through the church that are supposed to enable those that are disabled those that cannot be delivered in the dimension of spiritual deliverance but they need their deliverance financially after the workings of miracles deliverance after the demonstration of power after the preaching of the word you still have certain people that remain poor not because the presence of the lord is not there but the presence of the lord has been availed it has been availed by the presence of money the presence of the lord has been availed by the capacity of not only money or funds but materialization that enables development not in the spiritual dimension but in the practicalities that enable the less privileged so ananias and sapphira were supposed to hand back some of the proceeds that they had received in the name of the lord but then they decided to extort bribes in the name of satan they decided to extort funds not in the name of jesus but in the name of the devil they decided to keep part of the proceeds they decided to stand in the presence of the holy spirit and lie in the presence of jesus and keep part of the money instead of having proceeded forward to give back part of what they had received this is happening in ministries whereby a preacher is given money to build by congregants and that money goes towards the lifestyle of a man of god or that money goes towards other avenues that have got nothing to do with the development of the church Ananias and Sapphira were leaders in that church that was being over seared or overseen by Apostle Peter. So they had the capacity or the responsibility to delegate funds. And they had the responsibility to know where to use the funds and where not to use the funds in the presence of God and they stood before Peter and laid 
part of those proceeds at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit, to extort funds from the Holy Spirit? This is church extortion. Spiritual extortion in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And to keep back part of the price of the land, to keep back the part of the money, and while it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine? Was it not in your power? Why have you conceived such a thing in thine heart? And why have you lied unto God? Why? Because you have not lied unto men by keeping part of the money. You have not lied unto men by keeping part of the money. You have not lied unto men by not giving what you are supposed to give. This applies also to congregants who are supposed to be giving whatever they are supposed to be giving inside the house of the Lord and they keep part of those proceeds. If you have been given a responsibility by the Holy Spirit as a congregant, as part of Jesus' flock, as part of Jesus' sheep, to hand over a certain amount of money either through partnership, building projects, agreement, whatsoever agreement that you do in the house of the Lord and you keep part of that money back and you don't proceed it further where it is supposed to go as pay the agreement that was done in the house of the Lord. You are extorting funds from the Holy Spirit. You are extorting the church. You are an extortioner in the house of the Lord. Extorting is not only in the business world or in the financial realms, in the financial spheres where you believe that this is the only, the, or these are the only platforms where you can record the acts of corruption. Extortion is also happening in the house of the Lord. When you preach your gospel with the means of extorting money from, from congregants, when you use a violent, aggressive, abusive gospel just to dig inside the congregants' pockets, when you use all means of collecting money from congregants which are not legal as pay what the scripture has allowed you you are extorting when you take money from certain people that you're not supposed to take money from for example when you take money from sinners adulterers murderers homosexuals corrupt politicians certain people that you're not supposed to take money from you're extorting bribes You are taking bribes. And when you take those bribes, you are not bribing. You are not the one who's being bribed, rather. 
but rather you are bribing the Holy Spirit by extorting funds from God's people instead of giving them the word of repentance before you take money from them instead of preaching the gospel of truth instead of teaching the word of truth but rather you extort funds from the church you steal funds from the church you are doing corruption inside the house of the lord using your position of influence using your capacity but you are abusing that office capacity through extortion in the house of the lord i hope you are learning to understand that extortion is not only in the corrupt world only it is not only in the business world in the financial political circles no it is also inside the house of the lord and many shall stand on judgment day in the last hour to answer on behalf of crimes that they committed not crimes of other activities that you might assume that these are the criminal offenses that are recorded in the world there are crimes that are committed in a form of sin inside the house of the lord and extortion is one of them ananias and sapphira were supposed to end back all the proceeds but they kept part of the money ananias and sapphira were supposed to bring back the money and that money was supposed to assist not only the church but that money was supposed to also go towards the projects of building like i said those projects they were obviously not catering for the apostles but they were catering also for those that were less privileged those that were poor and peter is asking ananias and sapphira why have you kept part of the money and after it was sold after you had done all the sales according to the instruction of the church as per your responsibilities was it not in thine own power to keep back the money was it not in your authority to do the right thing was it not in your authority to simply come back with all the proceeds but you have not lied unto men but you have lied unto god and at that very moment ananias, ananias after hearing those words from apostle peter he fell down and gave up the ghost and great fear came on all of them that had these things and the young men rose wound him up and carried him out and buried him and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife not knowing what had happened came in also why because these two had already made an arrangement made an agreement behind the scenes that they were going to keep part of the money they were going to keep part of the proceeds they were not going to hand over the full amount probably they wanted to start their own project behind the scenes and the holy spirit said 
I'm going to punish these two. Not because of fornication, not because of adultery, extortion, bribes, theft, stealing, fraud inside the house of the Lord. And Peter asked Sapphira the same question and said, tell me whether you sold the land for this much. And she said, yeah, we did for that amount, yet it was not the amount. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that you have agreed to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried your husband are still at the door, and you come in here, and you lie in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Then she fell down straight away at Peter's feet. Without Peter even making any declaration, Sapphira fell down and gave up the ghost. Child of God, I'm talking about the levels and the degree that are inside stealing from God, the levels and degrees that are inside any bribes, the degree of the offense that is inside extorting funds from the Holy Spirit, extorting funds from the congregation, threatening your pockets in the name of greed and selfish ambitions. She fell down immediately and straight away at Apostle Peter's feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carried her forth and buried her alongside her husband. And great fear came upon all the churches and upon many that did these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. After that, Peter went on to do miracles. After the matter of Ananias and Sapphira, who fell down during a service, Peter still went ahead to do wonders. After that, Peter went ahead and did an outreach. And the rest of the men in that city, they repented because of the death of Ananias and Sapphira. And believers were more added to the Lord after that act again. After two that wanted to extort funds in the house of the Lord had fallen dead and they died. Believers were added. If it had happened in this time, they would have said it was occultic. He sacrificed two souls. Yet they don't know that it was the Holy Spirit who did that. Yet they don't know it was the Holy Spirit who made that two. Two got made in the house of the Lord. And after Peter had addressed that issue, believers were hated because of that act. Multitudes, both of men and women insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and coaches and the shadow of peter by merely passing by those people they got healed meaning that peter was enlarged not only financially or physically or material but spiritually 
and people brought those that were sick and those that were vexed with the evil spirits and unclean spirits child of god i'm here sent again by the holy spirit to rebuke extortion to rebuke church bribes to rebuke the act of extorting funds from the holy spirit the act of extorting funds from the congregation lying in the presence of the lord in quest of raising funds lying against from the congregation lying in the presence of the lord in quest of raising funds lying against the holy spirit in quest of extorting money from the church bribing the holy spirit by extorting funds from adulterers and fornicators those that you're supposed to preach the way down to of repentance but you are taking their money in the name of keeping quiet about their sins i'm here to rebuke this act in the presence of the lord and i pray that you if you are part of such actions if i'm part of such actions repentance has been given unto your way as an opportunity to lead a straight life in the name of jesus